The only thing you need to consider around optimal health is how aligned, ask yourself the question, how aligned am I how often would you vary a workout? I'm never strict with my split. Right. It's like I do a modified, same like banging a chick as well. Oh yeah. You gotta go slow first, get the rhythm, and then, yeah, then, then, then you the speed answer. up. Good morning, everyone. I am back on that Monday grind with a nice cup of coffee. Mm. So good. I'm a full-blown coffee addict once again. Actually, it's not that bad. I'm only having one large coffee in the morning and that's it so far. So that's definitely manageable. But um, I'm not feeling 100% yet. Like I've still got a sore throat and a bit of like phlegm. Uh, I know you don't need to know this, but I'm just gonna tell you anyway. Um, but I'm still gonna train today. I don't, I don't feel 100%, but during the day I actually feel okay. Like when I come outside and I get in the fresh air and I breathe in that, that sea air, like I don't really feel my throat that much. But at night when I'm under, I've got the AC on all night, it really dries my throat out and it's so painful. I end up waking up a few times in the middle of the night, but it's too hot here to sleep without aircon. And um, the plan for today is pull with my buddy Jack. So Jack is a very interesting guy. He's all, he also does online coaching as well. And he takes a very health first approach like I do. So I imagine we're gonna talk about a lot today about health optimization. Um, and he's got a great physique. So I'm sure, I think it's gonna be a good session. Um, and that's it. I am literally just gonna enjoy the rest of this coffee and then go for a nice walk along the beach. It's Monday, so I've got a lot of stuff to do. I've got a lot of client check-ins. Had a new guy join the team over the weekend as well. Uh, also, by the way, guys, I've got two spots left for November. So if you wanna join the coaching team, you can submit an application down below I'll personally work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you hit your health and fitness goals if that sounds like something you're interested in the link is down below all right so okay, bro. I'm here with my buddy Jack and we're gonna be doing his workout today Paul Paul all right take me through it okay bro do you want me to talk you through the workout from the get-go or just go through each exercise? Yeah, you can you can speak what's going on in your mind or you know there's no there's no format to this. Okay, so we're just keeping casual. Start. So would you flick that behind your neck if you're doing that? No, I wouldn't. I, w I wouldn't worry about it too much. So yeah, I was just saying to James, the reason why I like to start a pool session with rear delts is because most guys are internally rotated, so they're like this, obviously exaggerating. So if you build your rear delts, it just helps you from a postural perspective to just sit a little bit taller, which will then help you from a chest perspective trying to build your chest because your shoulders will naturally sit back a little bit more, um, which will allow you to build a bigger chest. So, yeah. Is it the warm up? Yeah. yeah. How, much, how many sets do you tend to do working set wise? Three, usually. Yeah, I'm two or three. Three, three to five, well, rarely five, but say if it's carbs or something I'm really focused on, then I'll do that. I'll do five. And for those of you <clears throat> that don't do this in the gym, this is not me being, um, how do you politically correctly say this? I'm just getting molested right now. Yeah, I'm not molesting James. This is to help him to connect with the rear delt. Because the rear delt is such a small muscle group, it is hard to find when you are trying to build it, especially if you don't have big rear delts. So it just helps to, to build that mountain muscle a little bit. Yeah. Doesn't it? Like the connection helps fucking yeah. loads. <laughs> also, one of the benefits of, of starting with uh, more of a, like an accessory movement like this is it just helps you warm up for the bigger lifts where you're more likely to get injured. It's very hard to get injured on a machine yeah. like this versus if you were to start on uh, like a, I don't know, a, a deadlift. Row. Yeah, or a deadlift. deadlift or a bent over row, your risk of injury is higher than if you were to start on something like this. 
gonna do a few more uh, reps, warm up, then we'll go in, yeah? Yeah, do, do you just do your workout and I just follow along. So when you do warm up reps, how many reps do you usually do? So as the weight goes, as the weight gets heavier, I'll do less reps. Yeah, yeah. So like I did about eight on the lighter weight and then I did about five and then I did about three, then I'll go okay. into my workers 10 to 12. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. All right, so it's still a warm up set, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, when you're warming up, you the, the purpose of a warm up is to help to build your mind to muscle connection. So you really don't want to be fatiguing the muscle group that you're trying to train when you're warming up. So this is why as the weight gets heavier, you want to then do less reps. Because if you're doing loads of reps on a, a warm up weight, you're just going to bury yourself and then your working sets are just going to be a shit show. <laughs> so I actually met Jack, well I first saw Jack on a YouTube video, he popped up randomly uh, on my timeline. It was a Bali one, wasn't it? It was a Bali yeah. one, yeah, it was like a Bali vlog or something like that. So I clicked on it, I was like, oh cool, this guy looks good. And whenever I see, like, um, I'm not being like disrespectful, but whenever I see like a, a smaller oh, creator, man, my muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I always want to like, you know, I leave a comment because I know the comment helps the algorithm, right? So I commented on his video, and then a couple of weeks ago, I was training at a different gym and uh, he was on the machine next to me and I was like, hmm, You look familiar. I think we know each <laughs> other. And then, and then he, he mentioned that uh, I, spoke, I commented on one of his YouTube videos and then we just got speaking from there. And you know what? You raise an important point, particularly in this generation where like we both go to the gym. A lot of people in a gym environment are very egotistical. Yeah and you dropped that ego by commenting on my video, and now we're training together in Bali, and we're good friends. So yeah. it just shows the importance of fucking putting the ego aside in life, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Particularly when you're trying to network. Like, yeah. you have to just drop the ego and be receptive to new fucking friendships. Yeah. Stuff, you know? Yeah, because a lot of people, they can see, I might see you, obviously you're good looking, you're in shape, I'd be like, oh, like, this you know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But instead, I'm like, cool, what a stud. Like, yeah, we, yeah. we should be friends, we should hang out. Yeah, you and know? we have a lot in common, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Right, first work here. All right, Just give me a little bit set. of contact, please, bro. Contact? Oh, oh you want adult. me to touch you as well? Whoa. Yeah. This is not this kind of channel, bro. <laughs> it is today, right, my boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> wow. OF coming soon, guys. <clears throat> Set one. Yep, go for it. good <clears throat> so what you want to do as well bro is come around here I know the lighting's not as good <clears throat> but we want to focus on here <clears throat> not too close not too close because <clears throat> this is the muscle that we're working right now <clears throat> you can see it contracting Oh, 
see like the range was a lot shorter at the end yeah but yeah, the yeah. muscle was probably still pretty firing you know? yeah I, I do that on a lot of exercises like at the end i'll just do a few partials yeah it's kind of similar sort of thing yeah but again context is key with stuff like this like i'm in a surplus at the moment so i have the recoverability to take my sets to that degree of failure whereas you're in a mini cut aren't you yeah so calorie deficit recoverability isn't there so james is better off not burying himself like I am at the moment, because he doesn't have the calories to support the adaptation that should come from that stimulus, so. And also, I'm not making any excuses, but I am still feeling a little bit sick today. Yeah. <laughs> All right, set two. Good bro. Pause at the bottom. Good, so we go down and pause, and then go. Nice. Nice. Oh, locked Tom. Feels good. That was good. You got another set in you or not? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Always have one more set in me. You spoken about the ladies on your channel yet in Bali? What do you mean? Just like the caliber of ladies in Bali. Um. So I know you obviously. Maybe I've not said that. No. I'm trying to incorporate more stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, uh, I started doing a bit of vlogging with bring girls in there those videos haven't come out yet but all oh, right nice yeah, yeah 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 good yeah so single boys bali is in my opinion the the best place i've ever been to uh, from a female perspective in terms of just like the amount of good looking girls that are here yeah right yeah yeah there's no shortage of hot no. girls yeah there's a lot of them so also the culture here is like no other place i've ever been to nah i feel like the girls like even though the girl isn't necessarily a hoe, a fop, whatever you want to call it, when she's in Bali, typically they are just a bit she's a more game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know it's I mean? like hookup culture is just yeah. ridiculous. Here. Like it's easier to finesse a female in a place like this. If you can't get laid in Changu, you are fucked. fucked. You are. You've fucked. got no hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, set three. Last one, yeah? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Good. Three. Four. Five. Good. Nice. Good. One. Nice. Okay, set three. Let's go. I'm usually very fatigued by the time I do rear doubts, so I don't feel it as well. But I find if you ever want to prioritize a muscle group or an exercise, if you do it first, you're going to get the most gains out of it because you're just the freshest, you got more energy. Cable shrug. Cable shrug. I just put one knee on just to like create better stability, really. Okay. Got to keep your head down at all times. Yeah. And it's really for that upper neck trap region. So yeah, this exercise we're using to target the uh, upper traps. 
which again don't don't get a lot of work. Yeah. If you're doing rows or if you're doing pull downs, even upper back focus pull downs, you're not ever really targeting the real upper trap. Even strokes yeah. sometimes you'll just target like the mid trap. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to that real like neck located trap. The good thing about the cables is <clears throat> like anatomically to train your traps, you need to be working in this plane, sort of like wide to close. Whereas if you're just doing a if you're just doing a normal shrug, it's just like this. So it limits your ability to actually fully yeah, contract you, your you trap. Want your arms out. So if you have them out like this on the cable, you can get higher up. That being said, I don't think you can expect to grow massive traps from movements like this because they are quite fluffy. Yeah. But again, it's like hit your rear delts first, then your upper trap, and then if you did like a heavy rack pull or yeah. a heavy row, you're then going to, in my opinion, get more out of those movements. Yeah. Because you've already stimulated the tissue that you're trying to yeah. stimulate, you know? The you biggest I saw my <laughs> traps grow was when I was doing deadlifts every week. Yeah. That's, and, and that's the meat and potato shit. Like, yeah. they're going to allow you to grow best but this will help to just improve that connection so you can get more out of the lift. Yeah, yeah. It's also useful to do shit like this as well because if you're, again, like we said at the start, if you're deadlifting first, it hammers your central nervous system. So if you can pre-fatigue on exercises like this, it can help to yeah. not only improve stimulation, but also to um, uh, reduce CNS fatigue. Yeah. yeah. Like you could do this exercise every four or five days but to do deadlifts properly every four or five days yeah. <laughs> uh, will be much harder. Ooh. Good, yeah, so let it really pull your traps to the bottom. Ooh. Yeah, really let it pull you. Nice. Look at that juicy back. <clears throat> Keep your head down. There we go. Mm. Awesome, bro. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a good exercise. Good enough. Yeah, really good. It's accurate. Oh, I feel that. Also, with programming, so it depends what element of the back you want to bring up so if you want really thick erectors and you want like a thick bodybuilding back this type of programming is not what you want to be doing because you want to be prioritizing your heavier lifts first like if you look at jp for example he'll do a, a who's that jp train by jp know how to train by jp fuck off <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy's been living in the mirror <laughs> Fuck it out. But anyway, like if you see a big fucking bodybuilder on stage, like they've got massive erectors and they've got really thick, dense backs. And that, in my opinion, comes from heavy density rowing. Yeah. Um, I don't want that. You don't want that because that's not a beach body look. Yeah. Like we're better off having a lot less lower lap work yeah. uh, development and more upper back because it's more of a like more aesthetic taper. beach yeah, yeah. body look. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Like my back's changed drastically over the years because my programming's dictated that change. Yeah. Like I used to have really thick lower lats uh -huh. from all the heavy rowing I was doing and I, I don't fuck with that look. Same. You know, it's a bodybuilder yeah, yeah. look. I don't like it. That's so. really why I don't deadlift that much anymore either. No. Nah. So you have to be careful with the training advice that's out there because people will go, oh, do the hard stuff, you know, and all this egotistical nonsense. Yeah. It's like do what will build the back that you're after. Yeah. Yeah, people just say, oh, you should do squat, bench, and deadlift because yeah. they, they, they think they sound cooler by yeah. saying that. What he's doing here is really letting the weight pull his shoulders down, which means he gets a greater range of motion. And ultimately, you're getting more out of each rep when you do that. He's getting a really good stretch at the bottom. 
And then as he's coming up, he's contracting as much as possible <coughs> to shorten the muscle. So again, so really this upper trap musculature, which is what we're working on the exercise. Awesome, bro. Good. There's more there, come on. Good. Oh. This is a good piece though. Yeah. So in terms of programming, so we did rear delts, did upper trap, now we're gonna do like mid trap rhomboid region, so. Where are you holding the... Uh... Uh, yeah, neutral grip, I would go a little bit closer grip though. <sighs> A pronated grip, sorry, yeah, like you are, like you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to target here. Okay. There we go. Because again, relative to like the aesthetic that we like from a sort of physique development perspective, we like the more beach body look, so building the upper back and not so much lower back is more complementary of that objective. That's a great machine. It's awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. It's Highly um, recommend. It's uh, smooth. So why don't you use straps on uh, pull day? I never use straps. No? Because I want, I want to improve my grip strength. Yeah. So even if I sacrifice a bit of strength on any back exercise, yeah the trade-off is worth it because I want as strong a grip as possible. So you'd rather have better forearms than the better back? Well, I'd rather, right now, I'd I rather would. improve my forearm yeah, yeah. more so than my back. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I just think it helps to have a more balanced strength overall. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if my, say if I'm doing hanging, or if I'm doing pull-ups or something like that, yeah. and my weakest link is my grip, yeah. and it feels like it's a bit of a shame, I may as well get that as strong as possible, right? Or Only if, as strong as your weakest link. Or if you're on a roll with the ladies here in Bali. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're gripping onto me, bro. <laughs> I'm talking your technique, your technique. Ah. <laughs> so again, with warm-ups, not loads of reps, and on a warm-up, you really want to squeeze the muscle that you're trying to work to really make sure that it's engaged because again that's the purpose of a warm-up it's to more so activate as opposed to warm the muscle up we're in Bali it's 30 degrees it's fucking boiling we don't need to warm up we need to activate the muscle that we're trying to stimulate which is these bad boys here Yeah, I think I arch my back a little bit more than you do. Yeah. You keep quite a vertical yeah, back, Yeah, stay, right? stay quite vertical. Okay. I know why you're doing that, Yeah. because it does work well for the upper back, but you're, I think this, this suits the movement a little bit better. <clears throat> yeah, that looks like, that looks better to me. <clears throat> You come round here as well, bro, from the back, whilst we're on whilst we're on camera. If you look at James, James's whip where he's grabbing the handles at the bottom, like it's at a right angle, which is perfect. That's that's a great <coughs> position to stimulate that mid upper back muscle. All right, first working set. Come on. 
Come on. Oh, sweet. I think that's another key form tip as well. When it gets harder, you don't go faster. Yeah. You, if anything, you've got to slow down. Yeah. Not, not like stupidly slow down and train in slow motion, but be slow enough so you're ensuring that you're keeping the tension in the muscle, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes what I'll do is I'll do like, my reps will be quite slow at the beginning. And then because I want to get more, yeah. I will speed up yeah. slightly to, to make each rep a little bit easier, but I'm not really sacrificing my form by yeah. doing so. Yeah. Again, different ways to skin the fucking cat, right? All right, first working set. Good, so right in here. Yeah, it's good, bro. Right in there. Sweet. How did you feel with the vertical nuss? Like, did you feel? Yeah, I just feel it a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, I prefer leaning back and arching slightly because it allows me to get a better contraction. A bit more retracted. But at the same time, it's always good to vary exercises. Yeah. Like what I find is, especially if you just train on your own all the time, you find what you like and you end up doing more and more of that. 100%. And then you neglect things that you know, I never do rear delts first. I, ne I never do shrugs, ever. Yeah. I can't so you end up with fucking gaps in your physique, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. the same, man. You, this is why, as you said earlier, it's good to train with people so you can hit slightly different angles. Sorry to sound all Charles Glass. Huh? You know who Charles Glass is, don't you? Charles Glass? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I've heard of the name, but- JP, I... Charles Glass, wow. No, Charles Glass is, um, you know, like the Mecca in America. The bodybuilding gym. Yeah, yeah. Venice. He's like the OG trainer. Okay. Who used to train like fucking Flex Wheeler, Dexter Jackson. And oh yeah. Yeah. Oh cool. When I was uh, aspiring to be a bodybuilder back in the day, so I used to watch on YouTube. Now I watch you. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> nobody. No. Not me. Not nobody. But nobody watches. Nobody watches my shit. <laughs> Watch my shit, boys. They I will need do. The views, will man. do. Just wait. <laughs> You're gonna blow up after this video. Yeah. Well. All right. Second set. <clears throat> that set two I pretty much keep the same split. Yeah. But 
I'm never strict with my split. Right. It's like I do a modified push, pull, arms, legs. Yeah. But it really just depends on what I want to focus on. Yeah. And I just try and do a similar workout that I did previously. Yeah. But change some of the exercises. Yeah. So I'm, I basically I don't have any cognitive load thinking about oh what exercise I'm going to do. Yeah, yeah. I just think well what did I do last week? Which exercise do I want to change or which two do I want to do different? Yeah. And I just keep that's how I get a bit of variety in there. Is it optimal? No, but I'm optimizing for mental bandwidth rather yes. than like physique development. Yeah. You know. 100%. No, I, I completely agree. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll run with the same split for like, fucking hell, sometimes a year, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And same session, the exact same session. Really? Wow. Until I start to stall on an exercise, then I'll change it. Mm -hmm. So, the point I'm making is, don't change your training too often. You do not need to, especially if you're a newbie. If you're, new, if you're a newbie, you need to just focus on getting good at training, because training is a skill. Yeah, and people forget that. Yeah. Also, each exercise is a skill. Yeah. So the more exercises you try and get good at, the less good you're going to be at each exercise. Yeah. Whereas you can just, say if you just focused on, I know we said not to do this, but say if you just focused on bench press, deadlift, squat, and every single time you went to the gym, you just did one of those three exercises, eventually you're going to get very good at those three exercises. Yeah. But say if you've got hot a list of 30 exercises that you perform in a week, it's too much. You're not going to really get good at any of them at the it's beginning. It's chaotic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. When I'm programming, and I should say this really, I'm a coach myself, so when I'm programming for a newbie, say if they're doing like a, a, a upper body session, sorry, no, a pull session, that's a better example, I'll typically only give them four, four pull exercises. It's like even us, we, this is our fourth exercise. Yeah. You don't need loads of different exercises. No, no, you don't. It's chaotic. Yeah. Yeah, I always put, just I think to get four or five good. is the sweet yeah, spot yeah. for me. Sometimes I'll do six, especially but when look I do how advanced you are. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you're relatively new, you just need to focus on getting good at a few things. It very much is quality over quantity. So what are we doing here? Um, so it's a dead stop. So come up to the top like you're doing a deadlift and then go down to the bottom so you found your position there and then dead stop it and then barbell rub. Okay, so right here, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, yeah. If you look at James's spine from side on, so if you go around the side, so it's bang on side on, but you'll see it's full on perpendicular to the ground. Sorry, it's not fully perpendicular to the ground, but it's very neutral, there. which is bang on. That's exactly what you want. And James has done that naturally because you've hit a movement like this so many times. Yeah, yeah. Because you're fucking good at these exercises because you've done it so much. Uh -huh. You know, so again, if you're relatively new to training and you're trying to bend over row, a T-bar row, a deadlift, and a stiff leg. It's like, it's too much, man. Just focus on one thing. It really is the power of focus. You're much better off mastering one exercise for each muscle group, rather than being mediocre at three exercises for each muscle group. And that way, you're gonna, essentially gonna make gains much faster than if you just try and spread yourself too thin. It's a bit like trying, trying to get good at it's like trying to shag too many women. Time. Trying Sorry? to shag too many girls at once. Like just try and <laughs> finesse a few. No, no, when it, when it comes to dating, rule number one is never have one. Zero yeah. or two or more. Yeah. If you ever if you ever just have one girl that you're that you uh, are going after, you will fuck it up. Because you're not coming from a place of abundance. You're better off having zero girls or two or more. Yeah. But then four or five. It's too much. It becomes a part-time job then. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's hammering your the mission. Reason why I like dead stopping is because it just kills any momentum, and especially on a movement like this, it can get quite swingy. Yeah. So it's good to just dead stop it. Because also as well, when you're then tracking progressive overload, you're more confident around your progression because you know that 
you haven't cheated to get that high rep or lady has stolen your heart in Bali in terms of like um, ethnicity? Well, I don't have a heart to steal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same, bro. <laughs> um, ethnicity. Okay, well, typically I don't date white girls. Yeah, why is that? West, Western girls, like uh, English, American. I'm never, I'm not saying never, never say never, but I just find they're too entitled. I'm generalizing here as well. I realize if there's, if maybe there's one white girl out there watching <laughs> this video right now, very unlikely, yeah, but yeah. if you are, don't get offended. I'm just saying my personal preference. Typically, it's the personality. They yeah. come from the West, you know, in Western culture these days is like, yeah, you go girl, you deserve that man, even though they bring absolutely <laughs> fucking nothing to the table. Yeah, yeah. You know, High I just find of delusion. Yeah, you've actually fucking did a video on that, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, delusion. It's, it's delusion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I prefer. I mean, out here, supply and demand. There's a lot of Asian chicks, so yeah. you know. Yeah, I would say it's Asian. Asian. Has stolen Asian. the the heart, so to speak. But I'd love to go to South America at some point. Oh yeah. For many reasons, and obviously not yeah. just the locals, but. That would be a massive bonus. Do you know what? Well. I've actually had uh, a client literally just move to Argentina. Yeah. Because of all of the quantum stuff that I've talked to him about. Cool. How mad's that? Yeah, yeah. He moved. He was like, I can't do the UK anymore. Nice. Because it's just so suboptimal, isn't it? Yeah. The light environment for sure. And I think we should actually talk about that. But yeah. let's do a set. <clears throat> Good, bro. Come on. Yeah. Switch on. Yeah. 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 Nice. So one thing that you do different to most fitness coaches that I see online is you take a very health first approach like I do. Yeah. And for people watching, say, obviously, the whole Western approach to health is so, so backwards, yeah. right? How do you introduce someone to quantum biology and you take someone who's used to listening to government guidelines, yeah. thinks the food, food pyramid is the way to eat, yeah. uh, you know, is maybe since the whole thing of 2020 happened, yeah. they're starting to question, you know, are we actually getting good advice? Yeah. Is what we're being told best for us? How do you take someone who's open and receptive to new ideas, how do you show them the path of, you know, health optimization 101? So when it comes to medicine, there's centralized, um, yeah, centralized medicine, conventional medicine, which is like, you have high cholesterol, you go to a doctor, they put you on a statin, yeah. right? And then there's decentralized medicine, which is all about optimizing something called the mitochondria, which we won't go into too much because it'll fucking jar the listeners, but doing it in that way is, ba is basically about connection to nature. Yeah. And that is what optimal health is all about. So how I get someone to do what you just said, first of all, it helps where we're based in the world. On Harley Street, central London, it's fucking, it's a very authority driven place. So that helps because typically people will associate like expert level practitioner with a place like that. So when yeah. people come to us, although our advice is decentralized and not conventional, people will be like, well, they're on Harley Street. They obviously kind of know what they're talking about. So that's yeah, yeah. number one. And number two is from statistics. 
Like, if I have a guy that doubts what I'm telling him to do, I just show him my bloods. When I ran my bloods in January, my natural testosterone was 28.9 and yeah. the range is 8 to 29. Yeah. And I've used anabolics, so I ran that risk of never recovering my natural testosterone. So for my natural testosterone to recover to that degree shows that whatever the fuck I've been doing works. Yeah. Because even prior to using anabolics, I had a natural testosterone of 13. So it's doubled and more. And that's having used anabolics as well. So, so. would you recommend, say if someone wants to start optimizing their health, is one of the first things you'd recommend is getting blood work done? Um, I would say so because it helps, like a lot of decentralized practitioners will be like, no, don't. But I like it because guys like data. And if you go and your bloods are a shit show, it can sometimes be the kick up the ash you need to be like, holy fuck, yeah. this is a mess. I need yeah. to do something about it. Yeah. Say, um, say, say someone doesn't have budget. Yes, that's another for, consideration. Because that's probably one of the biggest objections to doing blood work is how much it costs. But, but, the reason why people don't do that is because they invest into shit that they yeah. shouldn't be investing into. Yeah, like yeah. A fancy car to impress people that don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I always rattle onto my younger guys that we have in the collective about this and like, if you can't afford to buy blood work, you can get a decent panel for 60 pounds. Yeah. You've revisited, go on their website in the UK, 60 quid, you can get an okay -ish Really, so panel. cheap. So it's like, there's no excuse in my opinion, like you have to invest into you, especially in the age range of like 25 to 45. Um, but if budget wasn't there, the only thing you need to consider around optimal health is how aligned, ask yourself the question, how aligned am I to nature? That's it. It's as simple as that. But see, so like to me and you, that makes sense because yeah. we understand, you know, what is what, what we're naturally supposed to do. But to someone who doesn't really know about anything, that how are they going to know if they're aligned to nature? So, first thing is consider your light environment. So, like, how much natural light are you getting during the day? How much time are you spending outside, not behind glass, under natural light? And then after the sun has set, how much artificial light are you exposing yourself to? Uh, because in terms of what is the biggest driver of optimal health, it is light. It's not diet, it's not exercise. And this is coming from a guy that has the background in those two things. It's light. So yeah, to start your health optimization journey, you need to ask yourself how in alignment am I with nature and what will drive that is being outside in natural light yeah. and blocking artificial light. As soon as the sun sets, there should be no lights on or if there is, it should be candles or potentially a red light. So light's number one. Um, and then also connection to earth, so things like grounding yeah. is super key. So standing barefoot on the earth, that could be uh, grass, sand, even concrete. Uh, so yeah, it's very simple. Like how optimal health is very fucking simple. And the reason why it is so simple is because they don't want you to know it's so simple because yeah. you cannot monetize the sun. You cannot monetize grounding. Um, there's no there's no profit in it no, so it doesn't make sense to promote it yeah only interest in promoting things that which they can make money from yeah. i think a great frame of reference is to just think back to how we evolved like every animal has evolved over thousands if not millions of years yeah. and if you were to map out the history of even just the human species and you were to plot on there the invention of electricity right that's when it, it started to go down it would be like it would be like this. On a graph this big, it would be like this, right? So we're not designed to live inside under artificial light. Like we, we were born without clothes. For most of the human existence, we would have been barefoot connected to the earth. We wouldn't have been in air conditioned offices. We wouldn't have been blasted by blue light all the time because it just didn't even exist. So the more time you can spend outside, the more time you can be in nature, the healthier you're gonna be. It's the same reason, well, it's one of the reasons why we're training at this gym right now. Yeah. Because there's no windows, it's all, it's all open air. And because we're outside for more of the day, we have more energy. So yeah. when we go back inside to do our work, because obviously it's quite hot, we kind of need to be in a cool environment to do work. We have more energy because of that. Set two. Yeah. <clears throat>
So in terms of volume, we're not doing loads of sets today because you've been feeling a little bit under the weather, haven't you? Yeah. So burying James with a boatload of volume and taking it to failure is just not, not wise. Yeah, if you're ever feeling sick, obviously if you're feeling really sick, you probably shouldn't train. But I've got a bit of a sniffly nose. I've got a sore throat, like it's not the end of the world. But I'd still rather come here and get a session in and just do a little bit less than normal rather than not come at all. So why are you doing this neutral? Just because I, um, on my pool days I work this element of the bicep as opposed to supinated grip. It's like a hammer grip, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But, but why, why are you doing that? To work the brachialis. So, to get more variation. Yeah, but also for like a complete bicep development because yeah, yeah. supinated is bicep brachy, whereas this is more brachialis, yeah, brachyradialis. Yeah. So what's your go-to kind of ethnicity? Out here? Yeah. I would say Asians, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, they're, they're very sexually attractive. Because they're thick, aren't they? Slim thick. Thick? Like slim thick. They've got like chunky legs and thin waists. Can be, yeah. Yeah. That's what I like. I don't really like skinny girls. No. What do you like? Do you like slim thick or what? I like athletic. Athletic, yeah, yeah. I mean a bit of muscle. Not too much, obviously. Bit of rhomboid, bit of upper <laughs> back. Yeah. <sighs> Easy. <sighs> I'd say one of the biggest mistakes people make on, I'd say most exercises, but especially something like this, is just doing it way too fast. If you slow down the movement, you just get more out of every single rep. Yeah, I also find the poorer your connection with a muscle, the slower you should train it. Yeah. It's like anything, isn't it? It's like learning to fucking ride a bike if you've never, well, my, my bike out there has gears. I've been used to using an automatic, so I'm not gonna be ragging the fuck out of that because otherwise I'm just gonna stall. Yeah. I'm not gonna do well with the bike. And it's the same with uh, your connection to muscle, like the poorer your connection, the slower you need to train. Same like banging a chick as well. Oh yeah. You gotta go slow first, get the rhythm, and then, yeah, and then, then, you then you your speed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go too quick early on and it's a fucking disaster. You can just, it can cause injury. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Herniated disc. Yeah. All right, set two. Set two. Veins popping, man. Come on, get that. Oh. Are we just doing two? Um, oh, you want to do three? See how you feel after your second. I reckon we do three. Yeah. The biceps, you can never have two bigger biceps, right? No, you can't, man. How long have you been in Bali? Four years. Fuck it out. Four yeah, years. Changu. Yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously I've travelled in that time period, 
not in Bali, I never travel in Bali, but I've spent collectively maybe a year in Thailand. All right. Um, like a few month or two in Dubai. Been home a couple of times for a couple of weeks, max. When, how often do you go back to the UK? Uh, well, I haven't been for 18 months. Right. Average about once every 18 months, yeah. What about your family? Do they come out here at all or not? Not yet. No. I will fly them out here at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Are yeah. we just doing two? Um, oh, you want to do three? See how you feel after your second. I reckon we do three. Yeah. The biceps, you can never have too big a biceps, right? No, you can't, man. So you've only stayed in Changu, you've not stayed in like a bud or anywhere like that. I've never been to a bud. Really? Yeah. Wow. Never been. <laughs> That's such a gym thing to say, like, yeah. I've been living here four years and I've fucking yeah, never been I got there. everything I need in yeah. such a small oh, but space. That's what I get though, like, when you come somewhere on your own, you'll chat to people you meet out here and they'll be like, oh, have you not done this, you are not done that? It's like, no, yeah. why do I want to? I'm on my fucking own, like, yeah, I don't yeah. care to go and sit in a jungle on my own, it's not the same, Yeah, you know? So I get why you have them, is what It's I'm like, just touristy things anyway, like, Whenever I go anywhere and I do the, the touristy things, it just it's fucking boring. seems fake. I'd rather go somewhere and live there for a month than actually experience the yeah. culture. And like, just being in Bali is enough. Get that. <clears throat> Go on. <clears throat> Did you fully rest yesterday then? Yeah. You managed to rest, good man. Yeah, yeah. I just went for a walk on the beach for like 90 minutes. Yeah. It gets pretty hot in the mornings. Oh, ah, yeah. <laughs> but it's good, like uh, I go, go to Times, get a coffee. Yeah and then just walk on the beach. It's such a great start to the day. Oh yeah, we don't realize how lucky we are, bro. Like, it's, it's, it's just a different, different way of life out here. All right, last set. Let's put it in. <clears throat> Good bro. Come on, James. Let's go. Put it in. Done. How would you like my new blue light blocking glasses? My last pair magically got broken. I just came in one day after the cleaner had been here and tried to put them on and the arm fell off. But uh, I managed to order some Indonesian blue light blocking glasses. To be honest, they probably don't do anything at all, but uh, let's give them a go. Now it is 7 p.m. and I haven't eaten anything today. So this is my first meal. 
I wasn't going to show you this meal, but it is so weird that I thought I might as well show you it just because it's weird. Okay, so this meal comes in two parts. First of all, we've got a ribeye steak and two beef patties for the main course. And then for dessert, we have a Snickers uh, cream of rice bowl from this place just near me. They make like cream of rice and then mix it with uh, different kind of chocolates or sweets or whatever you want. But this is the Snickers one. I'm in the process of trying them all right now. Uh, I haven't tried them all yet, but I haven't tried this one. So I'll let you know how that is. It maybe doesn't look that good, but I tell you, it tastes amazing.